Did you know that incorporating seasonal themed books into your Amazon KDP business is a great way to boost your profits at certain times of the year? Seasonal trends can ensure that your books have major sales spikes, but only if you are prepared to leverage them. Imagine just purely creating these seasonal books that people only want to buy at certain times of the year. Are you intrigued? Well, let's dive in. Welcome back, my name's Claire, this is Mrs. D. I'm gonna share with you today practical tips and tricks to help your books get noticed at these crucial sales times of the year. Plus, I'm gonna share with you today how you can stay one step ahead of the trends with my free hack and it could be absolutely game changing for you if you want to sell your books worldwide. And it's gonna put all of this information at your fingertips. And it's completely free. So you might have noticed that certain times of the year, your book sales go up, they go down, and you might just think, oh, it's just, you know, peaks and troughs. But actually, it's not, it is seasonal trends. You tend to find at certain times of the year, certain books will sell better. Other times of the year, they're not going to sell. And for some people, this can be super, super frustrating, but I like to see it more as an opportunity. Glass half empty, glass half full, half full every single time. So let me know down in the comments, have you noticed peaks and troughs within your sales? If so, let me know what are the months that you spike and what are the months that are your lowest sales as well? Because I'd be interested to know whether or not it's kind of similar amongst you all. But yeah, as I say, these aren't actually peaks and troughs, these are seasonal trends. And you can tap into them to get those major spikes in your sales. Think of it like this, your readers or your customers' needs, they change throughout the year, don't they? So for example, right now we're in Q4, we're thinking about Christmas, so we're thinking about the gift buying, perhaps the 2025 calendar market. And in fact, I've got a video coming out on that next week, so don't forget to subscribe so that you don't miss out when that video drops. I'm gonna be showing you how to create a 2025 calendar over in Book Vault. And you will be amazed at how quick and easy it is. And we're gonna go through all of the different things with it. You're gonna know exactly what to do, how to personalize it to make it your own. So yeah, so winter time, we're looking at gifts, we're looking into the new year. In the summertime, we might be, you know, a bit more focused on travel and um, journaling, um, self-care, all those sorts of things. And if you can tailor your books to do this, you'll be onto a winner. Now, what I have really noticed is that there are some KDP authors that are doing this just absolutely superbly. One which I seem to constantly bang on about within my videos is Coco Wyo. So they have, you know, these cozy, comfy coloring books, but they have the Halloweens. They don't just have one Halloween, they have multiple Halloweens. They've got the Christmas, they've got the summer, they've got the gardening, they've got Valentine's, they've got St. Patrick's Day. They have got every single holiday covered. It's not even just them. There's also, um, I don't know if you've seen it. In fact, I've got one upstairs. My son's got one. Um, he's got a joke book, which is a KDP book for, I think it was seven year olds or six year olds. I can't remember which year he got it. But this author has published jokes every six year old should know, jokes every seven year old should know, jokes every eight year old should know. So they are literally capitalizing on that market jokes for teens, jokes for girls, jokes for boys. And they've they've done that. Not only have they done that, but then they've also got, which I've also got, by the way, because you remember when you purchase something on Amazon and we're all gonna fall into the trap as well, it also recommends what other people would buy with this book. So we did exactly the same. It's got every interesting fact. A six-year-old should know, seven-year-old should know, girls, boys, it's got it all. They also do this within the Would You Rather market. And they really, really go to town once they've found that niche. 
And I think you see the same things with the calendars, the journals, the planners. If you kind of are creating them for everyone, but equally there's kind of that shared link, I guess. So for example, it's almost like you've got your um, mum tell me your story, dad tell me your story, grandma tell me your story, uncle tell me your story. You've got your best sellers, but these other ones are selling too. Because you've offered value in one, people are gonna come back and buy others. And because if your branding is similar and the same, equally, that's all going to help too. And you're becoming more and more recognizable. So don't forget your branding, even though you're going into different spaces. So let's actually dive in now into what are some of the seasonal themes that you can be thinking about. So of course, we've got holidays. Like that's just a no brainer. We've got Christmas, we've got Valentine's, we've got St. Paddy's Day. In America, you've got Thanksgiving, Black Friday, like there's so many. And that's just like US America. Like that's not even everything. Like I said earlier, if we're thinking about those winter gifts, diaries, planners, all those good things, gifts are amazing. Valentine's Day, think about maybe creating token books, those sorts of things. And perhaps actually that might be a really good video for me to do in the new year. Would you be interested in seeing like a Valentine's Day token book that could perhaps be a giftable product to your partner? That's not something I'd thought about before, but I think that could be quite a good seller. So let me know in the comments, are you interested in that video? Equally, you've got things like relationship journals. I don't know if you've seen those books where they're like back and forth journals. So you write, I write. They do them for like parents and children. Um, they do them for couples as well, friends. I think it's a lovely idea just to kind of create that more open and honest dialogue that sometimes people find really hard to have as a face-to-face -face conversation. So why not open it up in a book? Easter, another incredible opportunity, particularly focused around children. And also like faith as well. So maybe that's a good time for your prayer journals and things like that as Easter gifts. But activity books, coloring books around Easter are big, big business. Next up, we have got back to school. Here in the UK, it's usually the beginning of September, but again, worldwide, this varies. So what are people looking to purchase sort of in that, maybe some might start as early as July, but usually more August. They're probably looking more at sort of um, handwriting, exercise books, notebooks, planners, academic planners as well. So even though January comes, we get the yearly calendar diary. When it gets to September, we're looking at that academic diary as well. You could also be thinking about homework planners, home organizers. You know, people do see September as a bit of a restart and a refresh, so capitalize on that also. June and August are the biggest summer holiday months in the world. Everyone takes, I think in America you call it spring break. Here in the UK we have six weeks off. It's called summer holidays. But yeah, it makes a huge, huge difference. So during those months you might be looking more at your travel journals, planners, um, again, activity books, like crosswords to do on the beach, puzzle books, those sorts of things. Coloring books for the kids, just to keep people busy and occupied. Then of course, we've got Mother's and Father's Days. Again, please know that these differ in America and the UK, and I'm sure again, around the world. But it doesn't just end at Mother and Father's Day. Here in the UK, we have Grandparents' Day as well. So just kind of think about what sort of giftable things might you be offering. We already spoke about the Jeffrey Mason books, Mom, I want to hear your story, Dad, I want to hear your story, Grandma, so on, so on, so on. So think about those things as well. Obviously, you're always going to get sort of birthdays throughout the year, so focusing on those six, seven, eight-year-olds um, all the way up, boys, girls, and kind of niching down in that way is a really great way to go. Now, what I would also say is that those books, even though on the outside they look like the same, the content on the inside will be different. There may be some that might overlap and those sorts of things, but KDP wouldn't allow that book to be uploaded if the interior was exactly the same in every single book. 
that would instantly get pulled off. So I would love to hear from you in the comments. Have you ever created a seasonal book? If so, what was it? How did it go? I would love to hear all of the details because I think we can learn so much from each other. My biggest selling book is actually a puzzle book that I created and in fact I did a YouTube video on it and to this day it's actually around Christmas time I always sell copies. I'll post the link to the video down in the comments as well so after this one you can go and watch that and perhaps I'll link it on my end screen as well so you can just click straight to it. But that book did really really well particularly that first year I put um, a few ads behind it and that really helped as well and I think that's another thing to consider is ads like I'm not going to be paying for ads on my Christmas books in February literally no point who's going to buy that unless I put the book on sale and then people might stick it at the back of the cupboard and hopefully remember it to gift it next year but from kind of end of October, beginning of November time, absolutely I'm gonna be running ads on it because that's the time when the book was to sell. My journals, my planners, that's when I'm putting ads out. The reason that seasonal themes are so big is because deep rooted, that's what people are actually searching for. Gifts for mum for Christmas, gifts for dad for his birthday, gifts for my summer holiday travel planet like we aren't physically going out there and we're searching for these books specifically so therefore with publishing in a seasonal theme you're not just throwing spaghetti at the wall you're actually throwing spaghetti and it will stick if your quality is there and is if you can <laughs> i'm really struggling to say this for some reason this is like the fourth take of me saying marketing strategy um, so if you can keep up with your marketing strategy, then that's also going to really help kind of boost those sales at the right time of year. So how do you maximise the impact that your book has when it hits the market? For example, it's currently the 18th of November when I'm filming this. So is it a great idea today to go and create a Christmas activity book? Probably not. The reason for that is not that it's the worst idea in the world. You may be really fortunate and get a few sales, but the big hitters would have been on there for a month or two in advance. And by doing that, their BSR, their best sellers rank, is already going to be higher than yours. Therefore, they're going to get that visibility a lot earlier. So for you coming in now with like five, six weeks out to Christmas, probably five, it would be really hard for you to, even if you were super fast, create a book today, get it uploaded tomorrow, wait for it to be approved a few days and then to start selling. You will make some sales, I'm sure you will. And in fact, you would be ready for next year. So don't let me stop you. It is still okay to go and do that. But I'm just saying, if you really want to maximise your sales and to get those books out there, I would suggest two months ahead of time. So this is what I do. Let me get my computer so I can show you all the things that are possibly going to change your life here. Okay, so I've got my laptop here. So when I spoke to you earlier about the free tool that I use, this is what I use. So I literally use Google Calendar nothing fancy at all. So what you can see here is that these yellow events just here, these are Jewish holidays, the English, British holidays, Ramadan, we've got loads of different events, we've got Christian holidays, Orthodox holidays, I've got the American holidays in here as well as the UK and the way that you do this, here you go, if you just see here, so Christian, Hindu, holidays in the UK, Jewish, Muslim, Orthodox, is just at this side bit, click that plus button and then go browse calendars of interest. You can see here, these are the ones that I've got ticked. You could actually then also go through and say, right, okay, so when is MBA time? We've got religious holidays, regional holidays here, 
So now, for example, I can go in and let's look, I'm assuming it's gonna be you, USA. And then I can sort of work out, there you go. So United Kingdom, United States, if I wanted Solomon Island, like wherever. So there's so many different things that this bit here in particular could really open you up to lots of different markets that perhaps you don't know an awful lot about, or perhaps you do. But by having this in my calendar, I can then go through, now here we go, so we can see here, May, that must be the American, yeah, so that's the American Mother's Day. So where you've got Mother's Day on the 11th of May in the UK, it's at the end of March. So, it differs. In France, it might be a different date. And actually tapping into that sort of global market can really, you're going from very saturated markets in the US and UK to perhaps less so. Australia, like as an English speaking person, is a really great place for me to, you know, try and sell my books as well. So I use this and what I would tend to do is being in November now, I would be looking ahead to sort of January, February, thinking, right, what should I be selling? So right now, I'll be thinking about New Year's. How, what is it that people are going to be wanting to buy? They're going to be wanting to buy health and fitness books, cookbooks, perhaps. Um, not just cookbooks that, you know, have recipes in, although you could do those, but also as a gift for Christmas, that's a great one to do as well, you know, where people can write in their own like family recipes and things. Then of course, in February, we have got Valentine's Day. We've got the first day of Black History Month. We've got the first day of Women's History Month as well. So I would start thinking about all of those different things. So the, the other ones, I don't know too much about the Hindu Muslim holidays, but I would do a bit of research around them, see if what they do to celebrate them, a type of guru to them or a religious leader or what kind of significance does it have? But it really, really does help. Obviously we've got Ramadan down there on the 1st of March. What sort of things could I do to help someone through Ramadan? Could I create a journal specifically to follow their journey throughout Ramadan? And this is how I would start to incorporate those seasonal trends. Now I've been working on a really, really exciting project. And if you would like to be the first one to hear about it, then please click the link down in the description to sign up for my email list. And it'll be those guys on that email list that are gonna hear about it first. I'm super excited to do this. This is off the back of lots and lots of questions that I've received over on previous videos. So it's all around marketing your Amazon KDP books. So if that's something that you feel that you need a bit of help around, then definitely sign up to that list. Now, as well as using my calendar, I also think about my designs when I'm creating these seasonal books. So if I'm creating something from the autumn or the winter or for Christmas, I'm thinking about those autumnal colors, the wintry colors, perhaps the pictures that I'm putting on my covers and interiors as well. Whereas if it's, you know, summer books, I'm probably going to keep it a lot brighter, a lot um, more high energy. So think about those trends as well. It's not just about what your book is and what it's called. And also sometimes, I don't know about you, but I find that these ideas hit me at the strangest moment. So I actually use um, Notion to kind of organise my YouTube, my personal life and my KDP my Etsy store, it's all kind of done within Notion. So I have like a little brain dump section there. If you'd like a bit of a tutorial on how I use it, let me know down in the comments. I'll be happy to work through that with you as well. So thank you so much for joining me today. I really hope that you have enjoyed this video. This here is the video that I previously used to share around how to create a Sudoku book based upon Christmas 
However, BookBolt have done lots of different updates on the platform. Don't forget you can get 20% off if you use my code Mrs. D. And check this video out here. This has got all the updates on it that you need to know. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you've enjoyed this video and I look forward to reading your comments. See you soon. Thanks so much. Bye.